Hey folks, Quillateen here, and welcome to another episode of our European Ourselves 4 Let's Play as Lubeck. We're trying to make the Hansa great again, and I am playing this on patch 1.16.1 at this point. Uh, but by the time you see this video, almost certainly the point two version of this patch, the hotfix, will be out, which is going to have a variety of little tweaks to corruption um, and a couple other mechanics here and there. One of the big ones, this seems to keep happening. <laughs> we keep coming up with a strategy and then we find out about new mechanics, so we have to change our strategy and then they adjust the mechanics, so we have to change our strategy again. Well, the 20 province um, sort of soft cap for Merchant Republics. We can go over 20 provinces, but then we will start to take a Republican tradition hit. Well, apparently that only after this hotfix comes out, will only f be for provinces within states, not within, um, not total provinces. In other words, it won't, uh, we won't have an issue with territories and presumably also colonies or something like that. Um, so only state provinces count against that 20 province limit, which is very interesting. Um, so, uh, yeah. I, 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 that gives us a lot more flexibility about conquering territory. Um, you know, we, we won't going to be as worried about inland stuff. The inland stuff we might keep as territories. That makes a lot of sense. But we can still conquer without um, uh, without real restriction. Other than the fact that we can't grow quite as wide as comfortably as other nations just because of the, the state max. But, um, and, well, we're not going to hit our state max, which would be here. We have a max of 18 states. We're not going to hit that. It's going to be our province cap. All right. So, all that being said... Uh, things are okay, I guess. We're sucking up to some people. There's still a giant coalition against us, but it hasn't fired yet, which I guess is a pretty good sign. Um, I, I don't know. Stuff? Let's unpause and keep going. I think right now we're mostly just sitting on our hands, waiting for our uh, manpower to accrue. Hungary, no longer comes with Venice. Brandenburg, no longer kind of... Oh, that's too bad. They're probably just going to team up more aggressively against me. What are these? Catholic Zealots. Has Saxony converted over? They have. So, of course, the Protestant Reformation has started. And, yeah, it is very rooted over here. We are planning on staying Catholic until we can become Reformed. And the reason for that is... Ooh, felt hats. Um, the reason for that is there is a 100 prestige hit when you change religion. And we need to make sure we don't drop below minus 50 prestige. Um... Because if we do that, it breaks our trade league. So we're going to have to make sure we have huge prestige when it's time to flip, which is really annoying. We're using the Papal Blessing, actually, to try to offset some of our loss, but we're still losing 1.2 per year. We could, I suppose, decide to also invest in a prestige guy. Uh, this guy's probably... Well, we have the money. We could get a level 2 guy. Huh. Actually, I'm going to do that. Level 2, so we get a little bit more power points and more prestige. I mean, it's still going to decay, but very slowly now, which is good. Um, because, yeah, I want to be... Assuming... Uh, I, I'm... Yeah. I think no matter what happens with Centers of Reformation or whatever, I think you always take the 100 prestige hit by flipping religion. And if we do go to minus 50, we'll break our trade league. And probably... And, I mean, as soon as we recover, we'll be able to refund, recreate it. But by then, you know, provinces may have gone to other people. Which, that would be really, really, really annoying. So, um, yeah. Decent amount of money. Do want to keep a decent bankroll here for emergency wars and whatnot. Uh, force limit. Yeah, we're at 20 of 21. I think I was going to keep it there. I've got a, like, decent composition here. And, um, I think that's going to be good for now. Especially since we don't actually have any manpower. It's our current mission. Recover manpower. No, rival of rival. Uh, suck up to Lithuania. And we do have an extra diplomat. So let's go ahead and improve that to the max. He's a little cranky right now. Outrage. We do have a lot of the aggressive expansion kicking around. And actually, currently, you are in a coalition against us. Um, but... Over time, that will go away. The aggressive expansion will go away, and we'll suck up to you, and then we can complete that mission, and that wouldn't be too bad. Who are you rivaled with? Livonian Order? Wait. Did we rival the Livonian Order? Rival of a rival is Lithuania. Oh, okay, so it's not that Lithuania, it's... I actually don't know how any of this is kicking in. Maybe there used to be... A rivalry that's shared, and I guess it didn't reset our quest, because really we don't have a shared rivalry with Lithuania, but alright, that'll that'll do, I suppose. At least we share the same religion, and Lithuania will probably stay Catholic. Um, spy networks, yeah, that's fine. We are building some stuff, which is good, and I believe we've built up our navy to just about our naval force limit. So that's going to be fine. In fact, I'm going to go ahead, and even though I still want to save up, we're going to bring it up to, there we go, lots of light ships for trade. How is our trade power? 75% over here. I'm starting to think that it might be time to grab, like, say, half our light ships and send them over to the Baltic Sea. Um, we'd obviously be pulling more trade forward, which is good, which would be quite good. I mean, considering the fact that we are grabbing 43%, we have 43% of the trade power right now. 
just from the downstream. Also, we're getting trade power from Riga, um, which is actually here, and Bremen and Hamburg, because they're in our, our trade league. But particular Riga, which is in our trade league here, is giving us quite a bit. So, I don't know about half, but let's say we, um, uh, I guess, cancel mission. Split off, like, I don't know, ten. Ten barks. You guys are going to start protecting trade in the Baltic. And then U28 are still certainly still going to protect trade in Lubeck trade node over here. Yeah, so we lost some, but I think that's overall going to be okay. And in particular, I'm excited about pulling more trade away from Sweden right now. Trying to make Sweden a little bit poorer by diverting more trade away from this node. Not sure how much of a difference it's going to make, but that's all right. Lubeck gets centralized state for 10 years. Oh, less corruption, faster lowering of autonomy. I like that. We've got, what, two... No, one's territory right now. And which one is it? One of these trade modes. That's loot. Oh, did I not? I guess I didn't leave up uh, states and territories. I guess that's okay. Right, right over here, the Jutland. Because we only control one province. Um, 12 development. Yeah, so it's probably fine to leave it as, as a territory for now. We'll probably end up stating this whole thing. But for now, we can just leave it sit as is. Uh, new technology. Is there any reason... I would like to save my admin power. I don't think so. I think we're going to go for it. Don't care about theocracy. Um, new idea group is... Yeah, we're going to be grabbing a military one. Oh, national decision right away. Oh, a couple. Mm, tolerance of heretics. Right, so if I pass both of these, the tolerance of heretics will stay where it is. We'll get more missionary strength. I mean, we're going to want that regardless in the end. Um, uh, yeah, sure. I'm going to go ahead and pass them both. Heretics are definitely going to be a thing relatively soon. And yeah, we're going to grab some uh, military ideas, and I know for a fact I'm going to want plutocratic. I may want some other things at some point. Quality would be quite nice, for example, uh, because it boosts our ships. It boosts all the things, which is really, really, really nice. But I know I want plutocratic, um, because, I mean, 10% morale of armies by itself is also good. We get that, um, we get 15 in defensive, so it's not quite as good as that, but there's a lot of good stuff, including extra merchants, more trade goods, more caravan power, beautiful. Yeah, the cheaper tech cost, and actually the manpower recovery is quite... Now, it's not that huge. We don't have a huge manpower cap, but if we can stack that with maybe quant quantity ideas later on, I don't know. But plutocratic ideas are great. They're very cool and very fitting. We never end up taking plutocratic. Well, usually we're not playing a republic, but we often don't take a, a aristocratic, which would be the equivalent. And it'll be quite nice to mix it up. So we're ahead of time on military. Um, and at 90, so nine years, most likely we will have bounce back. So I'm going to feel confident about grabbing the first ID over here. We don't really need the available mercs. It would be nice, actually. I think I probably will beeline to the 10% morale of armies. Even though at that point, we probably won't be able to hit our next um, military upgrade level the very second it becomes available. But 10% morale is going to be pretty good. And in fact, it's probably worth waiting on a little bit of fire and shock. Combat width doesn't really concern me too much. Weapons manufacturing might be nice. I don't know if we'd be building the right things, but... Oh, and we got our Hanseatic ideas advanced. Right, this one was not a terribly important one. The, the stability cost modifier is is, you know, always fine. Um, cost justify trade conflicts, eh, whatever. But it advances us to the next one. More manpower recovery will be nice. Actually, between that and plutocratic, if we did go quantity, our manpower would recover super fast, both by having a higher maximum, but also there's even more manpower recovery in the quantity ideas. Um, which is very contrary to the cheap merc route we've gone to go. So, I mean, I'm not going to grab quantity, because quantity plus cheap mercs doesn't make any sense. But some manpower bounce back would actually be perfectly fine. So, we're still fine, just sort of sitting as is. Uh, Tyrone, yeah, I think we're sucking up to you as a, a potential ally against some extra threats over here. I don't remember specifically. Um, I could probably, yeah. Why don't I involve, invite you to a trade league? What trade node do you trade in? Probably, oh, North Sea, which is actually really good. We would love some extra influence there. Um, let me, yeah, let me cancel the Lithuanian one for a sec. That's probably the one that's going to come back the soonest. But a bit of rebellion over here. Hamburg plus Sweden fighting. Um, absent merchant and Krakow is not particular. I mean, 15 diplo power isn't much, but Krakow, we don't care about that much. So I'll, t I'll take that in this case. You've returned. You. Fight the trade league. Boom. Very nice. And I should probably go and improve relations, because we're not that high, and I want to make sure that you don't leave the trade league. But yeah, that's actually very handy. 
because the North Sea, we do want more trade power so we can pull more stuff towards Lubeck. It's not very wealthy now, although later on it really will be. It's improved relation. I wonder, is there any chance we could vassalize you? I mean, I realize you're far away. Distance between borders is a penalty there, and we can't royal marry you, which is a problem. Wait, do you no longer consider me a rival? Oh, but Sweden does. Um, I'm surprised I can still rival Denmark. I was going to say, I'm willing to bet that goes away at the end of the month, and it did. So we're going to turn around and rival Sweden instead. I was going to say, there's no way we can justify having um, Denmark as a rival. Cancel the Tyronean one. We can lift the embargo of Denmark, and instead embargo Sweden. Wonderful. Another trade power here. Well, we do have the most. I guess our ships aren't really giving us that much, because we're mostly getting it from, like, the automatic thing. But it's still not bad. Maybe it would be smarter to have in there. We still have 73% over here. After that shift, that ship shifting aristocrat. Oh, I don't want to lose um, stability, and the aristocrats already have no influence, and they don't matter. The Family Act. Ugh. So dirty. Oh, Sweden eating the rest of Denmark over here. Uh, Denmark is, or sorry, Norway is what I meant. Um, Norway is still existing over here, and it might still be really handy for me to grab some territory over there. We'll see. I suspect the next idea I take might be exploration. It'll be a little tricky, because I'm not sure... Yeah, we're going to be pretty close, actually. I think that is indeed going to be the case, because we'll get the plus 100 train range at level 11. Um, when do we get the next idea? Level 14. Actually, I guess I was debating potentially grabbing exploration ideas on this level here. But tis not to be. Maybe, as it turns out, we won't even need exploration. That is possible. We can't steal maps. We probably can't trade maps. Oh, that's why I was sucking up to Tyrone. Yeah, neutral attitude. How much more can I improve this? Actually, maybe I can get it from you. Because you're likely like me more, right? Still neutral attitude right now, which I'm actually surprised about. Well, let's do a little bit more and see what can happen. Okay, so we lost one of our advisors. Um, what are we looking for the most right here? Trade efficiency, obviously really good. Do I care about bonus to Diplo rep? No, if it was better relations over time, which I think is what our guy was, it would be nice to have that. To the point where it might be worth firing one of these guys and seeing if we get a better relations over time guy. I'm going to do it at least once. I guess we have to wait a little bit longer. Do I want to hire the trade efficiency guy for a little while? No. And these guys are more expensive to fire, right? I'm going to leave you in here. No, I'll fire them both. And increase the chance that we get one. I assume we have to wait until the 1st of March before we get another option. We'll see. Because, yeah, I need to burn off aggressive expansion a little faster. Otherwise, I mean, we're never going to expand again. And it's a no-go. You're cheap. I could fire you again. All right, one more time. I don't want to fire the level 2s. They're too expensive. We're going to go, like, more than one month here not getting an advisor, which is not what I want. And April 1st. What'd you give me? Better relations over time. All right. Wouldn't have minded if you came back as level 2 better relations over time guy, but I will take you. So let's take a look at the coalition map mode. 20. When this goes to zero, they'll be forced out of the coalition regardless. And at some point, it'll just grow so small that people will just decide to leave. And then they won't be able to recreate it because it's too... Um, they're going to be too low. The fact that Sweden is the highest has me a little bit concerned because I would like to continue to expand north, but that increases the chance. You know, what with the English? And the English are actually running over there. Um, increases the chance that, you know, coalitions will reform or whatever. On the other hand, the Germans don't care quite as much. It's Austria. Yeah, quite a bit of um, border conflict over there. And I'm fine with just sitting here for now, replenishing my manpower, doing all that. I need to stop. I uh, start sucking up to Lithuania again. And come on, pause. Thank you. Election. So, Republican tradition is high enough to re-elect. That's fine. Let's check our age. 46. That is fine. We are going to go and re-elect this guy. Congratulations, Balder. Welcome back. So, we're going to finish capping out on Tyrone soon. Then, yeah, we'll send you back to Lithuania. We'll just check to make sure we can't trade maps first. But I don't expect it. Not unless their attitude changed. And, yeah, they're still neutral towards me. 
and no. Well, that's a real shame. Okay, so when you come back, we're just going to suck up to Lithuania again, see if we can finish that quest. And we might legitimately be able to be friends with them later on, once they leave the coalition. It's funny, they're in a coalition now, but as soon as they stop being in a coalition, I think they're going to be totally cool with us. Unless they have specific desire on... Well, we don't have the Teutonic Order, so that's okay. <laughs> Civil Disorder. Uh, we've got some money. We probably want to build some more buildings. Let me just check my naval force. I'm at three more. Yeah, as um, autonomy goes down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop three more up here in the, uh, the Baltic. That's going to be okay. And, yeah, buildings. So, we got a fortress there, a fortress here, and a fortress in our capital. I'm going to hope that that is a good and reasonable amount, and I don't think I'm going to build anything more than that. I feel okay. Churches, any one that is really good? Yeah, Sealand, pretty good. I tend to build them anywhere that's over 10. The payback's not that bad. Uh, let's take a look at the marketplaces. There's a decent amount of trade power here. Start with that. We've got nowhere else we can build a shipyard. Uh, workshop for more goods is actually quite nice. Because not only do I get the production up front, but it adds value to the trade node. So we'll get double duty. Heat duty. Uh, I'll go and start it there. That's probably fine. Um, it'll also combat well, combo well with manufacturers later on. And we will go and build a church there and there. That's even still with a lot of autonomy. Oh, I actually overspent. Because that's making decent money even with 36% autonomy over here. So it'll get really good later on once that continues to burn off. Same thing over here. Uh, entered a coalition. Oh, I'm really worried I've overspent. Yeah, I did not mean to do that much, but I'm not going to cancel the construction at this point because we're not going to get all our money back. <laughs> Has this display always been like this with the merchants? Telling me how much they collect? I don't know. Dun, 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 dun. Well, luckily, Sweden is actually getting its butt kicked. I mean, I can't declare war on them right now. That would be bad. But it means if the coalition does fire, which and Sweden is a part of it, um, then they are a part of it, right? Right over there. Um, it means that we don't have to worry about them quite as much. In fact, we have to worry about them almost zero. The ships might cause more problems than anything else going on here. Speaking of ships, what are you doing here? You, Doc. And be mothballed. Yeah, you weren't even repaired. I don't even know why you were out there. Strange. I don't know. I must have moved you around or something. Yeah, just dock and be mothballed. I mean, I could repair them and prep for a war, but I think that's okay. Sweden, last time we checked, still had like 30 galleys as opposed to light ships. So Sweden has very little trade project projection, but is a powerful naval force. However, yeah, it looks like um, looks like England probably did a number on them. They lost. They had a lot of galleys before. I'm pretty convinced. I'm pretty sure I was remembering correctly. Maybe I read it wrong at the time, but I think they had like 30 galleys. But yeah, England is here with probably a bunch of heavies and stuff like that. Which So this has worked out extraordinarily well for me. Because I have more ships, but I'm mostly just building light ships for trade. Which means they don't fight quite as well on inland seas. If I could catch Sweden out here with against their galleys, then it would be fine. Superior numbers would win. But as is, their, their insane galley count was going to sink all my stuff. But no longer. Da -da -da. Yeah, Lubeck, we're at plus 80. And that's with... The aggressive expansion minus 17. It's interesting that despite the fact that they're in a coalition, I guess it, they, it's probably the other way. No, it has literally no effect on our opinion of each other, the fact that there's a coalition. Uh, well, we'll hit this button. We'll take the admin power and prestige. We'll be very good because, again, at some point we need to convert our religion. We have to make sure that we have above 50 prestige when we do it. Um, a level 3 trader for half price is actually exceptionally tempting. It's still, I mean, it's still quite pricey, but it's about the same price as the level 2 dude, which is really nice. I think I'm going to keep uh, Eric around here to help burn off the aggressive expansion for now. But once he's done most of the the countries, like most of these... Okay, Teutonic Order still at 50, that's understandable, 64. Yeah, I don't know. We might have to keep our, our better relations guy. Um, do I take the overseas merchant for plus one merchant right away? I think the answer is yes. Next Diplotech level is really good. But I don't really have, like, just the transports and the galleys. I don't necessarily care about that that much. The trade efficiency is nice. 
but no, I think finishing the trade ideas is a good idea. There's a lot of really high value stuff in here. Wow, the extra trade steering and caravan power is going to be phenomenal. Um, yeah. Now, this extra merchant right now. Again, right now, because of our trade range, I don't know how much we need more merchants. So it'll probably just be more inland merchants, in fact, is what we do with it. Where does this go? To Champagne. Which goes to the English Channel, so that's not particularly helpful. Um... I think we probably send you to Vienna and just try to pull a little bit more trade towards Saxony where we have 31% trade power there as opposed to here. Although it looks like actually, even though I don't personally have as much trade power here as in Saxony, looks like a higher percentage of trade is being pulled north towards Lubeck just because of everyone else who's involved here. So it actually might be, it'd be nice to get a split of the forward. So this is what, I mean, it's about four times as much, right? A four to one ratio goes towards Lubeck, whereas here we've got, I mean, you can see it on the map, it's more like a two to one ratio. So counterintuitively, I should pull trade towards Rhineland because for every gold that goes here, for every four gold that goes here, or five gold, I guess, for every five gold that goes here, four will go north to Lubeck. Whereas here, it's not as true, not as much would flow north. I think I got that right. I don't know. Oh, look at that. The game automatically set that, figuring that this is the correct move. So that's cool. I don't know how much extra we're going to pull. Um, I could send it to Novgorod, but I really think that that's going to do very little. Uh, all the trade is actually being pulled out of there. So it's not about adding more steering here. It's about um, adding more trade power, which the merchant doesn't do. Merchants don't really add trade power. So more trade power in Novgorod would ensure that more trade would get pulled out of it. And that's probably what we're going to want to do going forward. I could send some ships there now, but I don't know. I mean, being above 70 in Lubeck is nice and maybe sufficient. I don't think I'm going to add more ships here, but I'm not sure I want to pull more out. Mercenaries are extorting locals, so we could lose 50 military power, which I don't like, or gain a corruption, which I also don't like. Although right now we do have negative corruption because of the event that fired and we're actually ahead of time, so I will take the corruption. That's going to be fine. Actually, burn off relatively quickly. I mean, it's going to take five years, but this one point of corruption does nothing for us, so it is perfectly fine. Lithuania left the coalition against us. Beautiful. I mean, the AE hadn't even gone away yet, but they do have uh, rebels, so they're probably not as willing to get into a war. That's okay. Money accruing. Truce with Denmark has ended. That's interesting. And of course, Norway as well. Uh, we, we do have full army maintenance right now. I don't remember why we do, and thank you very much for attritioning me over there. Let's get out of Holstein. Oh, because uh, I think we were un beating up on rest in Holstein, but I don't think we need to do that anymore. And in fact, I we still have mercs up here. So let's go ahead, trash you, because we actually have a little bit of manpower now, and replace you with that. I mean, we're still going to prefer mercenary infantry where we can. Oh, Denmark. Oh, yeah, because we left the truce. That makes sense that they would declare war over here. Okay, so we'll save a bit more money. How much am I making? 20 per turn at this point is, as a net, is huge. And as a gross of 38, again, we I believe we'll come in second overall. Yeah, the Ottomans still make a lot because they control... Um, well, it's actually mostly taxation, interestingly enough. They have a lot of land in the highest development in the game. They do, in fact, have the highest development in the game. And considering our relatively low development in comparison, 215, the fact that we're making that much is good. We're making more money than France, even though we're a fraction of their size. And our expenses are probably a lot lower as well. Oh, Venetian trade note is gone. Interesting. <gasps> Venice has become a dictatorship. Their Republican tradition was so low, they became a dictatorship. If they can get their Republican tradition higher... Um, then at their leader death, when Marino dies here, it will revert to a merchant republic. But if it stays low, it will turn into an actual kingdom, which I don't think I've ever seen AI, actually any AI merchant republic, become a proper kingdom. How crazy is that? What an odd game. Still worried about Castile, especially Castile plus France. Very scary. Expand the bodyguard. We can lose tradition. No. And actually gain. So this is a 15 tradition uh, gain uh, and a one stability swing. If we value stability at maybe a little over 100, because stability tends to be more expensive for us, uh, you know, maybe we value it at 125. But this is going to be, even at our old, like, 10 to 1 ratio of Republican tradition, this would be 150 power value. And it's actually, in fact, at least twice than that. So we definitely want to take this. 
15 Republican tradition swing is worth a lot of power. So really good. If we were really, really desperate for stability, like if we were like super negative stability and we couldn't afford to raise it, we may have decided in the short term it was more worthwhile, but but no, I'm quite happy with this. So we got a couple more force limit going on here. Um, recent uprisings. We have money. We don't have a ton of manpower. A bunch of buildings just finished. I'm going to go ahead and actually get a couple of more um, cavalry over here. Because with my 10 infantry, plus more if I get mercs, I think that's a solid enough front line. And then cavalry are still better at this stage in the game. Quite nice. Are you still in that war? No, you have peaced out. Okay. Now, Denmark being a coalition doesn't mean, of course, they can't um, declare war on Denmark either. Oh, that gave us prestige too. Very nice. The higher your prestige is, the faster it decays, because it is a percentage of your current prestige. But hopefully we can keep it up there. Um, improve relations with uh, Hamburg, plus one Diplo rep, conquer Tuchel. Where the hell is Tuchel? Yeah, and it gives us a reward of 10 years of a boost for prestige. That's very tempting. Yeah, manpower to recover. This never works out for me. I think I'm going to take this mission. Because I do want to take some more Teutonic Order territory. So that sounds okay. I may not have taken this province. Uh, it is 16 development, actually. I think it is worth potentially even, you know, being part of our states. And actually, I suspect... It's part of West Prussia. Hold on. Yeah, so... It's not really that helpful. West Prussia. Okay. So, Dan... We already have a state for West Prussia. So it turns out to be pretty darn good. Oh, these are... Okay. So these are... This is all one state, and it's striped because I already have it as a state. So it's like, you probably want to take more of this. Same thing over here. Actually, I'll potentially make Lower Saxony not be a state anymore. Because I don't really plan on doing that. So if I do need to free up provinces, that's what I will do. I, for a while there, I was thinking about selling Lundberg to something else to get me below my 20 province limit if we should start to hit it. But instead, I just have to make it a territory. We wasted a little bit of admin um, turn it into a full state core, but not that much. And it actually served us well. We've had this province for a long time, so we were quite happy to have this be a full state core for a while now. But then we can give it up, and that's going to be okay. All right, quite keen on that. Not a whole lot heck of a stuff. Not a whole heck of a lot of stuff happened in this episode. But you know, just keeping stable, growing. We are a little bit hamstrung by. Um, our, our aggressive expansion. I mean, we've expanded very well in the past, and there's just a limit to how much we can do over there. Yeah, too bad about the distance in between borders. That would be quite keen. All right, so... Now, Norway, you are still under Denmark. Yep, that is still the case. Not a whole lot of Norway left. Sweden, what do you got? Catholic Zealots. Actually, I wonder if I want to support that. I guess we'd have to start spying on you. We'll probably leave it be, but it's interesting to consider. Uh, I didn't compare the trade before and after when we moved our people over here. It, I don't think it made a huge difference. Money is great, though. Recall that. Diplomat's fine, right? We did complete that mission. Oh, poor Lithuania. Allies-wise, we still have our three, and they're all pretty good. We might want to do a pass of sucking up to our allies, actually, just to make sure we're at 100% improved relations with them as much as possible. Muscovy, Saxony, and Brunswick, I believe. Yep. I love how we've got a nice little border here with our allies if there is a war that breaks out. How does Poland feel about me? They actually like me a lot. Despite the fact that they want one of my provinces and we're allied to one of their rivals. All right, Muscovy. Money's going up again. We could go and drop another building. Mm. This might... What, um... What are you in? Okay, so we're going to keep this as part of a state regardless. So I think it is fine to go ahead and drop another church in you there. And maybe one more. Now, this will drop me a little too low if I build one more church right now. So I'll wait. Because we could get an event that requires me to pay for something and I don't want to get a loan. It would be annoying. Whoa! Oh, pay off. I thought it was the HRE. For some reason, my brain just went and thought, Oh my god, they just elected Castile to be emperor. <laughs> Just paranoid about how powerful they are. How's Provence? You are you are independent. You're allied to Castile, so France won't want to declare war on you because Castile would probably defend. 
Although it would be nice if France did decide to do that, because it would probably break up the relationship between France and Castile. At some point, I think they'll have no choice but to rival each other. Aragon belongs... Like, Castile is a beast! So bad. So bad. Let's go up to speed four. There we go. Austria has been re-elected. Nothing to worry about there. Um, but -da 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 -da. I'm going to build a church in Holstein. Okay. And I guess over here too. You know what? Let's do it. it. Brings me a little lower than I'm trying to go to, but that's all right. Yeah. We should have enough in the stash now. Okay. Well, we're going to put a cut in here. Um, still generally happy with how the game is going. Can't wait for the aggressive expansion to go away so I can just start smashing face some more. I mean, it'll be an interesting thing. Like, at one point, the coalition will go away, but the AE won't have gone. Do we start warring right away? I'm surprised no one's called me into a war. Um, and, of course, there's just different things we can take. I could go to war, and I don't usually do this. Almost always, I go to war to take territory, either as a vassal or to seize provinces. But if, you know, if I have money and I have manpower and I really want to go to war with someone... Um, and, you know, I can declare on someone who doesn't trigger coalition. I could go to war for the transfer trade power now. I could go to war for just more humiliation, which would not be a bad thing. Actually, I could go to war almost just for the prestige of you winning a war if there's someone vulnerable. But it has to be, like, if I'm not taking territory, it has to be, like, a definite, easy, raffle stomp win of a war um, to justify spending manpower and doing all these things for something that's not going to give me land. So, we'll see how it goes, but it is a possibility. That being said... You know, there's something to be said about not blobbing out so much. We are doing exceptionally well as a country. Actually, here's something. Um, score comparison. Who's earning the most points right now? Ottoman Ming, but then it is me. By quite a bit. 25% more than France. Ming are doing 20% better than me. The Ottomans are doing, well, 69% better than I am in score. But that's, you know, that's not really a surprise. So we are clearly doing better. We are behind France in, in raw score, because they started the game generating score, and I almost certainly wasn't generating any at the start of the game. But now we're generating quite a bit more. Uh, military rating is certainly a thing over here between us. Uh, mostly I'm getting it because of the diplomatic stuff, which is mostly because of just naval things, fleet. If you really want a lot of diplomatic points over here, you build heavy ships. But I'm not going to do that. Anyway, uh, player, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So clearly we're doing well compared to the AI. Now, are we doing better than another player could be doing in this particular scenario? Probably not. But I'm still having fun, and I hope you are too. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.